about, uh, we, we've been uh, dealing with the different churches in the book of Revelation. And in Prophet Chuck's book, he's got in there, the, toward the end, the name of the book is called A Time to Triumph. In that book, he has toward the end for you to ask the question to yourself, what, which church am I? of the seven churches, okay? Now, we're not talking about just the corporate body, but we're talking about also you as an individual. Why is that? Because remember the the, the word says, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Is that not true? Right. So you're the church. Yeah. Yeah. So which church, this is a question that you wanna ask yourself, which church am I of the seven? So, so when I began doing that back in May, I was determined, listen to me, I was determined not to let my soul speak to me. I was determined not to let my flesh speak to me. But I said, God, you, I want you to tell me what kind of church is Newgate? What kind of church am I? And, and where are we? And so I just kind of left it in prayer and prayed it on occasion. And then recently I was in a meeting and we were worshiping God. I was in an elders meeting and we were worshiping God and I was reading out of the book of Revelations. Just, you know, how the, the talk about what he, what's happening in heaven right now. So let me help you to understand. You're going to be praising God in heaven. Amen. Amen. The word they're saying stuff like this, be it blessing and glory and honor and wisdom and power forever. Be it blessing and glory and wisdom and power and dominion forever. That's what they're saying in heaven. And then the elders do what? Fall down. Be it blessing and glory and honor and wisdom and power forever. There's another group just saying holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty who was and who is. The whole earth is full of your glory. So for those that, that, that don't know how to worship, I'm telling you, go to the Psalms, go to Psalm 149, 150, read those Psalms, go to Revelation, begin to praise and worship, because guess what? That's what we're going to be doing through eternity, amen? Amen. amen? amen. Well, as I was standing there and reading, then I closed the Bible, and I think the Bible opened back up, and I looked down, and it was in Revelation 3. And we're not going to go and read that. You've read it. You'll read it again at another time. Revelation 3, 7 through about 13, it talks about the faithful church. Come on. Okay. And God said to me, that's who y'all are. Amen. You're the faithful church. And I thought, oh, my God, I cried. I just couldn't believe it. Well, I could, but was happy, listen to this, was happy we weren't the dead church. Amen. <laughs> happy we weren't the compromising church. Yeah. Come on, come on. Happy we were not the corrupt church. Come on. Very happy we weren't the persecuted church. Woo! Happy we weren't the lukewarm church, because he said, you be the hotter foe. He says, I'll just spew you out of my mouth. Mm. Happy that we were none of those churches. <laughs> oh my God. And when he said the faithful church, I thought, wow, wow, wow. And in that scripture, it talks about what he's going to do for the faithful church. He said, I'm going to open the door. The, the, he says, I stand with the key of David. And I'm going to open doors for you that no man can shut. And I'm going to slam shut doors that... Men would try to open to get you to go through. That's good news right yeah, there. Yeah. So you don't know one of my prayers behind the scene is God. See me shut the doors that the enemy have for me to try to go through. See me shut so I can't even pull it open. Yeah, yeah. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. You haven't been through the wrong doors yet. Keep living. Yeah. <laughs> you'll slam them shut, cement them shut, you'll put barricades in front of them, you'll put a guard in front of them, because you don't want to go through them doors. Right. But he said, I'm opening doors that no man will shut for you. He said, I'm putting the key of the, the keys of David in your hands. And then he goes on to talk about those that came against you, how he's going to make sure you're protected, and they're going to come bowing down to you. He's talking spiritually.
spirits. They're going to come bowing down to you. See, it's hard to get the saints to believe stuff like that. But it's what the word of God said. And we've come into an era where we must believe. Oh, yeah, right. Right. yeah, yeah. We must believe that God will do things for us because we are with him to keep us protected, to keep us stable, keep us healed, keep us delivered, keep us restored, keep us set free. When are we going to believe this? The title of my message is The Reward or Rewards with an S of Faithfulness. The Rewards of faithfulness. But what happens to a person that's been faithful? You've been called the faithful church. What are some of the characteristics of a faithful church? First of all, we've got to understand God is faithful. Yes. 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 See, we, we, we got to understand that, that God appreciates faithfulness because he's a faithful God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a part of his nature is to be faithful. So he tells us what for us to be like him. I'm making man in what? My own image. A part of that image, a part of that characteristic is faithfulness. Yeah. Let me help you understand. God is not going to turn his back on you like people will. Amen. He will never. He said, I'll never leave you. Or forsake you, no matter what you're going through, no matter your darkest day. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear any evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Yeah. Thy rod and thy staff, they do what? They comfort me. He said, I'm not going to leave you. He said, I'm not going to fail to keep my promises to you. Or, listen to this, I'm not going to disappear on you. God said, I'm not going to change up on you. I'm not going to say, let's take the hill and we get halfway there. I can't find you. He's absolutely, positively trustworthy. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. Yes, he yes. is trustworthy. When it comes to faithfulness, God is our example. He's proof. Of faithfulness. Deuteronomy 7 9. I'm going to just give you some scriptures. It talks about he is the faithful God. Psalm 33 and 4 talks about he is faithful in all he does. Yes, yes. Everything he starts out with you, he's faithful to finish it with you. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 talks about God is just faithful. He's going to be there. He's going to be there with you. First Thessalonians 5.24 says, The one who calls you is faithful. He called you to this. He's faithful to see you through it. To see you complete your destiny. If he called you to be a great minister of the gospel and go all over the nation, he is faithful to make sure it gets done. He's trustworthy to let you, oh, I'm about to preach, to let you know it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, Hebrews 10 23, it says, For he who promised, I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one who promised you yes. blessings and, and promised you good health and sanity. You know, it's a lot of people about it, Christ losing their mind. Them spirit, mental spirits messing with them. You got your right mind. You've been promised it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> God's looking for some people yeah. who will be faithful. Yes. Faithfulness, let me tell you what the word means. It comes from the root word that means trust, mm -hmm. loyalty, integrity, and steadfastness. Amen. Let me say it again. He, he's faithfulness is to be to have trust. To be loyal. What are you loyal to? Integrity. Integrity. What are you doing behind the scenes when nobody's watching you? Well. Are you still doing the right thing? Well. It's integrity. Steadfastness. Are you where you're supposed to be? Doing what you're supposed to do. On time. In place. Ready. Saying, King, what's your next orders? God wants us to be just like him. Amen. Amen. You know, in Hebrews, it talks about the faithful hall of fame. Mm -hmm. And it talks about Moses being faithful. That's Hebrews 3 and 5. It talks about David, different scriptures. David was faithful. 
1 Kings 3 and 6. They called him the faithful servant. Hezekiah was faithful. 2 Chronicles 31 20. Paul was faithful. 1 Timothy 1 and 12. Oh my goodness. The saints of, of Ephesus was faithful. That's Ephesians 1 and 1. Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, some of these names just go with me. Ty Crady, Ty Sickus. There he is. Ty Sickus was just declared faithful twice in Ephesians 6 21 and Colossians 4 and 7. The brothers in Colossians were faithful. Colossians 1 and 2. Wait a minute. Ephratus Ep was faithful. So who is that? Colossians 1 and 7. I'll tell you about it. And then on and on, Silas was faithful. 1 Peter 5 and 12. Antipas was faithful unto death. Revelations 2 13. God values faithfulness. Have you ever heard of that name? It's spelled E P A P H R A S. Epaphras. You ever heard of him? So most people haven't heard of him. And see, he wasn't excited for his big church. He wasn't excited for his worldwide ministry. And he wasn't excited for his healing and deliverance. He was excited for what? His faithfulness. Tysicus was cited for his faithfulness. See, see, these men and women were faithful unto God. He, here's how they did it. They didn't do some, try to go do some big old great thing, although they had great cause. But watch this. They were faithful what? Step by step. Okay. Oh, he don't hear what I'm saying. Step by step. What? Day by day. They did what? The right thing. Yeah, they right. were in the they were in it for the long run. They weren't trying to run get them a name or trying to get them a big worldwide ministry. But they said, okay, God, what's the next step you want me to take? What's the next step? You know, I was in Dallas. It's so funny. The first night when they did worship, and, and you know, well, what was it, a couple of months ago, three months ago or something, I was out here and the worship team was singing, and God said, Go play the drums. And I got up and prayed the drum. That was a step in faithfulness. So now I'm in Dallas at the Cindy Jacobs General's meeting, and I play the drums one of the nights. <laughs> How did that happen? Step by step. Being faithful. I'm talking about with some real good singers, and they roll their eyes at me a couple of times, but it's okay. <laughs> I was faithful, amen. The Bible says if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you master over many things. We're looking for some faithful people. God is sending out an alarm. He's sending out a word. He's sending out a clarion call. What happened to the faithful people? I'm looking for some people that will lay some stuff down. We'll stop being so busy and be faithful to my house. Faithful to the call on their life. Faithful to help in season and out of season. Faithful to pray. Faithful to be on those calls. Faithful to come to the prayer meeting. Faithful to come to the Bible study. I'm looking for some faithful people. Faithful to give and don't say I ain't going to die. He said I'm looking for some faithful people. Church, where are the faithful people? And don't give him no excuse. About why he can't be faithful. Moses stunned and became a deliverer. Gideon was a farmer and became a general. Deborah was a housewife. She became a judge. David was a shepherd, became a king. Elijah was a servant who became a prophet. Esther was an orphan. <laughs> That became a queen. Peter was a fisherman. Yeah. That became a preacher. What, what, what's your excuse? Oh, there, there's no excuse for us to, to not be faithful to the one that created us and, and to the one who sent us here. You've been sent on assignment. Your life is really, I, I just want you to know, in this area, your life is really not your own. You've been bought with a price. And guess what God's saying right now? I need you to know I bought you. And I need you to know because you're mine there's some things that I want you to do. Can you be faithful? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Be faithful. If you're a husband or a wife, be faithful to your spouse. Yeah. If you're an employee, be faithful to your career. Hello. If you're a parent, be faithful to raise them children yeah. in the love of God. <laughs> if you're a student, uh-oh, see y'all, uh, the millennials thought they got away. If you're a student, be faithful to complete your homework. Hello, somebody. If you're a homeowner, watch this. Be faithful to paying your bills. Oh, my God. Each role in life that you play, you want to be faithful. Let me give you a few characteristics of faithfulness. Hey, we got a whole bunch of time. I'm going to preach about three hours. Lock the door. <laughs> characteristics of a faithful person. A faithful person realizes promotion. Listen to this. It's going to sound different. Realize promotion rests in their hands. Hallelujah. Okay. You know, the word talks about promotion not coming from the north, south, east, and west, but God given. But here's what you have to do. You have to be faithful. He said, he said what? He gave us three things. He said the followers of Jesus had three characteristics. They're called, they're chosen, and they're faithful. Mm -hmm. What? They're called, they're chosen, and they're faithful. When God's ready to promote somebody, he said, who's been faithful? Who, who, who's been here that, that come on Sundays and come on Tuesdays and a good tither? And every time we ask them something, they got a good attitude and they're right in place all the time. That's who he promotes. So promotion is in your hands. You don't promote the sloppy person that barely comes and whines about giving a dollar. Think about even on your in your careers, who gets promoted? Now all of them are right, but most of the time, who gets promoted? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Look at God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shot. See the breakthrough is here, honey. The breakthrough is here. Come on, just thank God. Just begin to thank God. Just begin to thank God right here. Bless you. Praise the a faithful person moves before he or she is asked. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking to him about to cry. Don't cry, don't cry. I'm hold on. I gotta preach. Okay. Suck it up. Faithful person moves before he or she is asked. You know, they see something they, they, that needs to be done. They anticipate things. They say, okay, wait a minute. If we go, okay, like the Spanish-speaking church that's coming here. They said, oh, okay, so we, we're coming. Then we're gonna, we want to do an inventory and look at your sound equipment and see what we can bring. Come on. Okay. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. And then I said, well, what about my lights? They said, oh, we'll do lighting for you also. Yeah. See, that's faithful to God's yeah. kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. They're already anticipating. So faithful people anticipate needs. Okay. Okay. Before don't nobody have to come in and ask you, okay, water the plants, please. Okay. The plant is dying. Don't you see it choking? Yeah. Okay, the pastor can't do everything. Exactly, the pastor can't do it. Just a cup of water. You see the trash can in the bathroom just filling up, overflow, and you try to put that one little last tissue on it before everything falls out. And once you do it, you run. I got it. <laughs> no, honey, get another empty the trash. Oh, come on, y'all laughing because y'all been doing it. And I'm like, for real, church, for real. <laughs> a faithful servant does more than he's asked or he, she's asked. They do more than that. Oh, you want me to uh, uh, water the plant? Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to cut off all the dead plants, parts of it too. Not only am I going to water it, you know, I want it beautiful, so I'm going to cut off all of it. And as a matter of fact, you know what? Let me know when the church needs another new plant. I'm going to buy one. Okay. Oh, see, 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 see. Come on, stay with me. Stay on the boat. Stay on the boat. <laughs> they go the extra mile. Amen. Okay. A faithful person, listen to this, is faithful for life. This is what we've been running into. Those part-time faithful people. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? I said part-time faith. I can be 
be faithful long enough to get from you what I want. Well, uh -oh. <coughs> but once I get that, I ain't gonna fall off. You ain't gonna save me. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna come up with all kind of excuses, excuses, not excuses, excuses that I can't come to church. Cause, cause really, in my heart, I'm not faithful. See, I'm in this thing for something else. I'm in it for the wrong. Y'all, did Jesus say that? Faithful for life. You want to be faithful. You want to be known as, a, oh, if I give it to so-and-so, if I give it to little Scotty, she going to do it. And she's gonna keep she's gonna keep doing it until I tell her to stop. And then she's gonna add stuff to it. Yeah. And gonna enhance it. Next thing I know, I'm gonna look and say, oh my God. Yes. How did they get so beautiful? Well, I was faithful, and as I was, God began to download to me different things to add to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you don't hear yes. me. Yes. Who wanna hear well done? My good and faithful yes. servant. I do. I want to hear that. Amen? Yes. Yes. Faithful for life. A faithful person, I just said it, they stay committed. But I'm going to be faithful yeah. <laughs> over what he's told me. See, my the lust, there, there's no lust in, in my heart to try to, that can pull me away from my faithful position. Uh, there's no desire bigger than what God wants me to have right now that'll be watch this to pull me out. They stay committed. A faithful person stays faithful. Watch this. Oh, I love it. In good times and in the bad times. Right. Somebody told me one of the pastors along the way, apostle told me, he said, you know, you, you, you have to understand. He said, watch churches. He said, people, they're almost like fair, fair weather friends. You, you know, the weather doing good, the fair weather, they with you. Weather get bad. He said, immaturity causes them to walk away. Because they're in the tour and they'll understand when trouble comes. What, what did the uh, apostles say? They said, we count it all joy when trouble comes our way. That way we know that we're on the right track for Christ. But see, we got a whole lot of superstars in the ministry that when trouble comes, they think you done done some sin or some big old thing. All I got to say is just keep on living, baby. It's a part of our testing. It's a part of our trials. It's a part of God building faith in us. It's a part of the love to show us showing God how much we love Him in the good times, in the bad times. When I got a lot of money and when I'm broke with dust in my pocket, I still love you, God. I'm still committed to this work. I don't care if it ain't but two people, 20 people, 2,000, 4,000. I'm still going to come and do what I'm supposed to do. Why? Because I'm going to be faithful over the few things and watch out in a minute. He get ready to make me master over many. Watch out. You're going to get the same. Just be faithful. Can you tell your neighbor, be faithful. Be faithful. A faithful person finds his or her job in the kingdom and then they do it. Well, I, don't know, I don't know nothing about that church. I don't know what they do. Well, you know, sometimes we got somebody that needs to turn on the lights. Somebody got to straighten the chairs up. I don't know what to do. I don't. Somebody got to be at the front door you know, greeting and ushering. Somebody got to be in doing the same. We, you think these lights just come on by themselves? Clap. <laughs> we don't have a clap here. Well. <laughs> we need people to come get the church ready for church. Amen. A faithful person is found doing what he has been told to do. Wait a minute. The last thing that he's been told to do. See, see, a lot of people get they get weary and well doing. The Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing, for if you faint not, you're going to what? Reap. Really? But, but some people think it's mediocre, just, oh, you know what? I keep, all I do is do these CD covers and put this thing in this widget and print that and multiply that. Look like a little assembly line. I'm just doing it. But I know I'm called to the nations, but I got this thing. And, and, and guess what? 
If that's what God's called you to do, you keep stuffing them envelopes. You keep doing whatever he's called you to do. Guess what? God told me, just do the 50-state tour. Along the way, some what uh, 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 United Nations ambassadors along the way pulled me aside and said, wait a minute, what is this message you got? I can't believe you changing the world with this. Man, we don't make you a, a world goodwill ambassador of peace and reconciliation with connections to the United Nations. What was I doing? All I was doing was trying to do that 50 state tour. That's a, then another group says, wait a minute, what are you doing? And then the, the Ethiopian former president says, you're going to get the president's award. And, and all I'm doing is trying to go. I said, what? The environmental? He said, yeah, because what you're doing by going to these states and impacting the people, you're impacting the land and it's changing environments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. yeah. All I'm trying to do is that little fifty state tour, you know, try to be on a bus, train, plane, donkey, whatever. Yeah. Or are you gonna be found faithful doing that last thing? Mm. Huh? What was the as a matter, what was the last ask yourself? You don't have to do it right there. Don't, 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 because you're gonna be messed up the rest of the service. <laughs> just, just stay in faith and stay happy right now. But when you get home in your quiet time, you're pretty kind of what what was the last thing you told me to do? Yeah. The question then is, am I doing it? Then repent. Yes. <laughs> All right. And go ahead and start doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen to this. A faithful, I'm winding down. A faithful person uses Satan's attack to build spiritual muscles. Oh, oh, oh you hit me there. Wow. And you hit me there. And you hit me there. Oh, I feel me getting bigger and stronger. Boy, you better get back out of my way. I'm going to come out with some scripture you ain't never heard. And it's going to hit you right between the eyes. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Psalm 35. Let the angel of the Lord chase those that are chasing me. Let sudden destruction come upon my enemies. See, that's all in the word. Let the enemy's way be dark and slippery. I told you, you shouldn't have messed with me. I came back stronger. A faithful person realizes promotion takes time. It's not beneath me to go play the drums. Let me tell you, there was a situation and we give God all the glory for this. And, and, and hear how, let me tell you, it's a good story before you receive it. Don't, don't think it's a bad story. It's a good story because this, this, this was a great transition. In our meetings when we were in uh, Dallas, the day the morning I was getting ready to speak, all of a sudden a lady passed out. She had to be about 80-something. I know her because I've been to her house. Uh, she, as a matter of fact, she's a state leader. She hosted me to come and do a conference there. Okay. She fell out. Now, listen, I'm talking about a, a, a faithful person who realizes it takes time to be promoted. But also, a faithful person will do what it takes to get things done. Amen? Amen. Amen. So she's standing there. She collapses. And she's like probably on maybe, I'm on the second row. She's maybe on about the 10th, 8th row. And she falls out and, and people are going around her praying. And, and I got the mic and start going to warfare prayers. And Cindy came, got the mic and start doing something. I was standing there and I was like, okay, you know, God said that we got this anointing on us that we can raise the dead. Okay, is this my first time? I'm ready to go do something. I got to do something. And I'm standing I couldn't get around the people. And then they were telling everybody to get back. Before I could even think, and, and one of the people told it on me, Cindy told everybody what happened. But before I could even think, I got down on the floor, scooted up under all of them pews, got to that woman and grabbed her hand. Come on. So you will live and she my mother holding her hand there and they pumping her trying to get her back and, and trying to they, at one time they did get a pulse, another time they did get some kind of a uh, breath and it's still pumping. I'm so they said everybody get back. They couldn't see me. I was still under the and then when the ambulance came, I slid back from under there. Okay. Wow. Tori, one of the musicians there, he said, when I was getting ready to get up to speak, Cindy said, 
Tori, come up here and tell her Vanessa. Tell what she did. So come tell everybody. Go. Say, Vanessa did something. Vanessa did something. So Tori comes up and he goes, I've never seen an apostle like that. He said, this woman right here, she went under the chair. She went out of her shoes, under the chair, went back to that lady, holding on to her, praying for her. He said, and you would have thought when everybody moved, she would have stood up and walked out. He said, no, here she come back from under the chair. He said, I ain't never seen an apostle. you think when one of us are in trouble, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I don't care about messing up my clothes. I don't care about messing up my hair. That woman needed help and I was going to give all the help I had. That's being faithful. Jesus says this about faithful. In Luke 16, 10 through 12, he says, be faithful over a little. Be faithful over money. And be faithful over what's another's. Yeah. Rewards of faithfulness. We're we going to end it with this. Number one reward. Faithfulness attracts God's attention. That's out of Psalm 101 and 6. It says, my eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. Yeah. God, so a faithful person attracts the spirit of God. Yeah. Number two, faithfulness releases God's blessings. It says in Proverbs 28, 25, it says, to the faithful you show yourself faithful. Wait a minute, I went to the wrong one. Psalms 28, 20, or it's Proverbs 28, 20. It says a faithful man will be richly blessed. Richly blessed. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, that's a promise you can hold on to if you're faithful now. See, see, and don't worry, if you haven't been faithful, all you got to do is repent and start being faithful. <laughs> okay. Number three, it says faithfulness gives God opportunity to prove himself faithful to you. In Psalm 18.25, it says to the faithful, you show yourself faithful. Yeah. Number four, faithful, faithfulness produces safety and security. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It says in Psalm 31, 23, the Lord preserves the faithful. He's watching over you. He's protecting you. I'll give you writers a moment to catch up. So number one was faithfulness attracts God's attention. Psalm 101, 6, faithfulness releases God's blessings. Proverbs 28, 20. Number three, faithfulness gives God an opportunity to prove himself. He's, he wants to be faithful to you uh, and will be, but he wants you to be faithful also. Yeah. Yeah. Number four, faithfulness produces safety and security. Psalm 31, 23, the Lord preserves the faithful. <laughs> yeah. Number five, faithfulness, listen, guarantees God's protection. Psalm 37, 28, the Lord will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected, how long? Forever. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Number six, faithfulness releases rewards. 1 Samuel 26, 23, the Lord rewards every man for his faithfulness. Number seven says this. Let me go. You need a moment. Let me give you another moment. Faithfulness. God wants faithful people. He's ready to promote. He's ready to cause shift and change. He's ready to bless. He's ready to make you rich. He's ready to cause things that have been messed up in your life to be turned around. All he wants you to do is be faithful so he can show himself faithful. Number seven says faithfulness is in small things leads to big things. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge or make you master over many things. That's Matthew 25, 21. Faithfulness, watch this right here. And we're closing. Faithfulness protects you from accusations of wrongdoing. In Daniel 6 and 4, no fault or wrong could be found in Daniel because what? He was a faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to be in that place where, you know, when people accuse you of stuff, it's false accusation. Yeah. The Bible said the accuser of the brethren is in the, in the courtrooms of heaven accusing us day and night. I 
job is to make sure the accusations are lies and not truth. How do we do that? Be faithful to God. Number nine, faithfulness is valuable because of its rarity. God believes faithful and we believe faithfulness is valuable. Why? Because it's rare. Everybody's not faithful. So Proverbs 20 and 6 says, Most men will proclaim his, each his own goodness. But who, who can find mm, who can find a faithful man? All right. mm. God's calling us to be and already said that we are a faithful church. Continue to be faithful. And if you haven't been faithful, come on up to being faithful. Because God has lots in store. He wants to bless the faithful people. He promotes people that are faithful. He protects people that are faithful. He gives blessing to who? The faithful. He rewards faithfulness. So God is saying, all I need you to do is to come up a little bit higher. Be, be faithful. Uh, exemplify the characteristics of of faithfulness. Be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Do more. Do over and above what you're supposed to do. Be faithful to be on time to church. Be faithful to be in place in church. Be faithful to give in church. Because out of your faithfulness, i got plenty of rewards that I'm going to give to you. Things that you haven't even thought about. That testimony, some of you weren't here, but that testimony that I gave earlier today about what happened to me in Texas when they took up that big old offering for me. I, that was God. He was rewarding me for my faithfulness. And guess what? I'm not the only faithful person in here. There are others of you that have been faithful over what God's given you to do. And God said, guess what? I'm coming and my reward is with me. I'm coming and I'm bringing rewards to the faithful. I'm coming. I'm on my way. I got a whole lot of stuff in my hand. Why? There's a whole lot of faithful people in this house that I'm getting ready to lavish with blessings. I'm just not going to be a little trickle, trickle. Honey, I'm getting ready to open floodgates of favor over you. I'm getting ready to open floodgates of rewards over you. Things you haven't even thought about that you need. I'm getting ready to give them to you. You've been faithful over a few things. Promotion is in in the house. You have been faithful so long that you progressed yourself into a place to be promoted by me. And I'm coming. I'm on my way now. I'm bringing what? My reward with me. He told Abraham I'm going to give you what? Great and exceeding reward. You know, guess what? You getting ready to get great and exceeding reward. They are here right now. If you believe it, just raise your hand and receive your great and exceeding reward from the Lord for what great is your faithfulness great is his faithfulness and he's made us to be faithful people people say why are you going down to that little church and listening to that little lady because the Lord told me to. And I'm being faithful to what he says. And I don't care if he tell me to sit there for 10 years, 20 years. If he said to do it, he's going to reward me. The rewards of faithfulness. God has been faithful to us. And he wants us to be faithful to him in Jesus' name. Amen.